so what I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, what did I do during the COVID lockdown? And basically, uh, you know, I wanted to do something that I couldn't do normally because I just couldn't go out anywhere. And I decided to take a look at my shop and assess my workshop for workflow and and access to my tools that I use most often. So uh, for the workflow, I decided to, I looked around and I saw that a couple items were out of place. Like I had a sander over behind me, behind the bench, and most my other big sander is on way on the other side of the, uh, the shop. So I, I switched the two and then also had the sanding thing over there that I replaced and I brought the sanding over here. So all the sanding is right here and I may get out of frame for a second here. But I had my sanding and I had my my files and my carving chisels here also. So it made it a lot more convenient to do that for the workflow. And but the, the major thing I problem I had was that I had all my hand tools just scattered about. They were on uh, shelves, they were under my bench, they were way across the room, and it was just untenable. Uh, it just I just wasted so much time looking for tools. And so I decided uh, to start looking at making a wall hung tool cabinet or a tool cabinet. Uh, I looked at floor floor mounted tool cabinets. I looked at open shelf tool cabinets. I looked on several uh, internet websites. Uh, I looked at um, shop notes and I have a shop notes. Uh, here's the issue of shop notes. It was number 22 that I looked at and they have a very good one here. Uh, and I used some of the tool holders that they have on here. I, I rejected this one because it didn't have enough area for volume for putting all my tools in there that I need. So I rejected that one. I also saw that uh, Matt Cremora had a very, very large uh, wall hung tool cabinet. So I looked at his videos too. And, but the one I really looked at uh, in depth was uh, Mike, uh, uh, Name. I got it written here somewhere. Mike uh, Pekovich. <laughs> Mike Pekovich, he had an article in Fine Woodworking. It was the Tools and Shops 2014 issue. And he also had a, uh, and there was an article in there, but he also made a video of the uh, construction and the design and layout of his, his uh, wall hung cabinet. And so I, uh, I looked at the uh, introduction video that he had, and I liked it a lot. I thought it was very good. It, um, the thing that I liked the most about it was that uh, it was, uh, he's already, this was his third tool cabinet that he made. And so he, he, uh, he also, he already went through several iterations of, of uh, design and he started with an open shelf and he had a closed shelf and then he, then he, he graduated to having uh, shelves and panels and, you know, movable panels. And so he would decrease the amount of, of space that he had inside of his, his cabinet. And it was up at eye level. So everything was right here that you could see very well. So I like that a lot. So what I did was um, uh, Fine Woodworking has a um, video workshop and there's probably a dozen in there. And that was one of them. So I, um, I although I did have some, some initial uh, drawings from the article, um, when you go to, when you purchase, it was $15.95 for the, for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, the book or not the book, the, the plans and the, um, um, and the video. So we broke down the video uh, into, broke down the video into uh, various components. Um, so anyway, so uh, back to the tool cabinet, I got, I got the sidetracked here. So looking at the tool cabinet, like I said, you know, the wall cabinet, the floor cabinet, and then the open cabinet. So um, go to the next uh, thing. I, I, my wife is doing my cue cards. All right, here we go. Okay, so I looked at the, so like I said, I looked at the wood snip, Smith, I looked at the shop tools, and so I liked the the idea of the inner door panels and have a and like I said, they had the completed design. 
And the uh, the other person I did look at, if you, if the people don't know about epic woodworking, it's Tom McLaughlin. He also did uh, in an episode of classic woodworking. He did a wall-mounted cabinet, but it was just a very simple one. He just had a doors and an open shelves, and he had he had the plain till, and I'll talk about the plain till in another minute. But he had a he has a intro video, and it's very good. It's a good resource. He talked about. Uh, construction of it and um, and some of his ideas and how he got to that. Okay, next, uh, next one. You. Uh, so anyway, uh, I I spared uh, little expense in doing this. I uh, uh, some uh, one of my coworkers had given me some mahogany. So the case, this case is made out of mahogany, and it was a he was moving out of the area, so he gave me all the boards that were a shelf. So luckily, there was enough of it that I could make the the, the case for it. Um, the uh, key elements for this thing, or what what you want to consider when you're designing something, is that you need a place. If you if you're doing any handwork, especially with planes, you want a plane till. Uh, the types of plane uh, storage areas I saw, I saw vertical ones, but it, it, it requires you to have some sort of a latch to hold it vertically so it won't fall out. I've seen hor horizontal ones where they just slide them in, like this one's very small. You can slide it, slide it in and out. But it, the easiest access was a, was a slanted till plane here, or uh, plane till. And it makes it very, very easy. So you can just grab, grab your plane and away you go. And you're ready to, to rock and roll so you can put it right back in like this and you put the handles up here because you need the depth the knob will protrude into that so that's why it's like this so the three planes that i use the most is, is this plane my pocket plane and my jack plane here so i put those up so if i'm right-handed i put them over here if i were left-handed i would put them over here so I go. These are my go, three go-to planes a lot. This one's just for show. It's a beautiful wooden plane I bought uh, like 35 years ago, uh, and I don't use it that much. But it is a beautiful plane, and I like looking at it. But that's the way it is. Um, so, and I have another one. This is a, uh, uh, a small block plane, low angle plane. But uh, anyway, this was this is a my nostalgic plane. This was uh, my grandfather's plane. This is a Stan, old Stanley 1936 plane, so I like that one a lot. And this is my router plane. I just used this plane in a recent project. And and so you see the drawers down here, so you can put accessories for your for your router plane down here. Those are stops, uh, some extra uh, blades for that thing. There's another blade right there. So you put those down in the drawer, and these are very nice. Uh, Notice the half blind dovetails. <laughs> I learned that in our class. Anyway, so uh, put those back. So anyway, anyway, so the the general idea is to put all of the things that you're going to use very frequently, like all my marking gauges. Oh, I want to back up a little bit. So the first thing before I I got to the idea of doing the uh, wall bracket, I almost forgot about this. I was trying to find some way where I could put all my marking and measuring tools close by. So I came up with this little gizmo and I, I started putting them on there and I was using them, my marking, you know, these tools, you know, my pens and pencils, but it just got in the way. You know, when I would lay out my project on here, it would just be in the way. So I decided that this wasn't a great idea. So anyway, so, and put this away. Anyway, so the general layout is here. Put all your marking and measuring tools out here. Here's my my, uh, my pencil. I have a a uh, chip carving one that I use for for marking, and I also have another marking gauge down here. Marking thing, a double ended one. That's very nice. And scissors and and uh, so all the marking stuff here. Spoke shaves, saws over here. And the reason I put the chisels way back here was because they're darn sharp. And so I don't want to be reaching past sharp chisels to get to something in the back. So I put all my chisels way back here. They just go in and out like that. Pretty easy to get in and out. 
and they're out of the way. And I have I have some of these things in here of all my. So th these are the ones I don't use that much, so I put those in here. Of course, I got a couple mallets, and I have this one too, Carver's mallet that I use a lot. Uh, this was my grandfather's also. I refurbished it. Um, anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I did that. So anyway, that's just the general idea. Um, so the next thing is, how do you hold things? Uh, let me grab something over here. This is the stuff that I used to have everything on. All these things, pegboards and these things, and they were just terrible. Because when you'd have the single single hook, you'd pull it out and it would fall on the floor. Then, then uh, you, when you would come back, uh, when you were done with that, you would uh, forget about it. So you just lay your tool down on something nearby. So that half, so half the time you had several tools just laying around places, and you were trying to find your hooks and things. So I thought, you know, I, I'm tired of this stuff. So I, I took down my, I had an old uh, uh, cabinet, red cabinet, metal cabinet with an old snap-on cabinet that I got at an auction. And it had a pegboard in it, and it was just terrible. I mean, I, I had these beautiful tools, and I, I had them in this cabinet, and it was just awful. So I decided this was not the way to go. So anyway, so I, I did this cabinet, and I, I replaced my pegboard. Throw those away. So anybody wants some peg, some hooks, let me know. Uh, okay, so custom holders. So the custom holders, these are pretty easy. These are just straight ones right here. This one, I just did it on my scroll saw. I just laid out, I laid this on the thing and just drew a, a, a pencil line around it and then and cut it out and screwed it on there. So everything is screwed on here. I don't, you know, I, I would not recommend gluing anything until you've had this thing for at least a year. And if you think that's where you want it, then glue it. Uh, I use screws. Uh, I've used hot melt glue a little bit because you can reverse that. Uh, the other thing I've used uh, it are uh, the super magnets, like the metal pieces. It's just a super magnet right there, or a rare earth magnet. So I use that. And so these are just simply a rectangular piece of wood with a slot cut in it. And you just take it in and take it out like that. So you can arrange things. Uh, this again has a super magnet on it and magnet there. And just, you know, that one's just, a, this is aluminum, so it's just a peg. So anyway, so that was the general idea. So uh, the basic things other than the uh, chisels and squares are spoke shaped. So they're, they're you. There's probably a better way of hanging this because uh, they have holes in them, so you can just hang them vertically. It saves space, but this looks kind of neat, so I thought I'd do this. And also, you can you can get your uh, your all in here if I can get that out of there. You now you can put your all in and out. That's probably the wrong one to put there, but you can get that in and out. It's a lot easier than that when I'm not on video. But anyway, and these things are up here. Then your marking gauges. These are marking gauges here. I have an old these my older older marking gauges I put down here. Uh, let's see, where am I at here? Uh, okay, let's go to that one. All right, so so you see down here on the original design, he had all these cubbies because he had a lot more little hand planes. So I decided to put the drawers in because I really wanted the the space. So this is dovetailed uh, jig plus your your pika uh, leads in there. Uh, here's a little corner chisel, my old, my very, very old uh, ruler, 24 inch ruler. And let's see, these are the super magnets in there. But you know, you can, you can arrange it however you want to, but this is, this is handy. It's not glued together. This is tapered going in here. So I just stuck these things in here for the, for the time being. I can pull these out, rearrange it a little bit, and put it back. Anyway, so uh, where are we at on time here? Okay, uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, okay, I got that one, so next one. Okay, so anyway, so uh, the bottom line here is that you wanna build something that's very, very convenient. Oh, let, let me show you some more things before I do that. So on these panels, you can, the original one had holes in here, and I decided I wanna put a little knob so I can grab it a little easier. So I pulled that out, and so I put a couple things in here. Uh, 
this, uh, oh, I want to do a shout out to Steve Dunbar. This is uh, some veneer I got from Steve Dunbar. So the panels are uh, veneered MDF and, and uh, Boulder Burks plywood. So I bought a sheet of half inch Boulder, Boulder Burks plywood from Worth Wood Group. And it's a fantastic price. It's half the price that I could get it anywhere. I think the sheet cost me $22 for a uh, five by five uh, half inch sheet. And it's very, very good wood. It's 11, 11 ply, huh, I can't read that, see that. It's like eight or, it's, I think it's nine ply. Uh, but anyway, it's very, very stable. And so, uh, yeah, this is this is uh, English walnut. And this is the, I think it's Macore from, uh, from Steve Dunbar's shop when he closed it down. So over here, I have my saws. I have my more saws inside and I didn't populate, so don't, so if you're going to do this, don't don't get uh, too uh, distraught about not populating your cabinet in a in a, a very short period of time, because you will ha you will make changes when you get in here and you start looking at things. The thing that the, the advantage I I thought one of the advantages I thought I got from watching Mike Pekovich is that you know he had gone through like I said three generations of that, and uh, so he was pretty. Uh, uh, he he knew where he was going to go with these things, and he you know he had trial and error, and so I skipped over all of that trial and error. Let somebody else do all the the head scratching, and you know find and go to a one that uh, pretty well formed design. So anyway, so don't don't be uh, don't be hesitant to to try building one. It does it does take a while. The actual construction on this thing. Is dovetails. Uh, I have a lead dovetail, Jake. I know it's cheating, but um, I wanted to at least try it once. I had it for a couple of years. I, I bought it uh, from somebody, and so I wanted to use that. So, and so, you know, you don't have to use mahogany. You can use whatever you have. Um, so, you know, it's mahogany, and so, uh, so, you know, if you want to show off, this is how you show off. You, you do a, a crazy parquetry pattern. Uh, this is the Macquarie down here. This is cherry with some uh, uh, a negre. Uh, uh, it's not dyed. Uh, this is the actual black. And, and I used uh, a bunch of different kinds of wood in here and made it. I, I know this is showing off, and but yeah, I had plenty of time. But anyway, yeah, so this is very convenient. You just close it up, open it up when you're when you're working. So you have everything that you can see, and uh, it's very, very convenient. I have my even have my goggles. No, I have. I don't have everything put out here yet, but we're we're getting there. Um, so uh, these are very. I really like these saws right here. This is a rip saw and a cross cut saw, and they just. I got this one. This actually one I got this out of shop notes of all things. They had a, a way of hanging the uh, the gentleman saws. These are uh, Lee Valley saws. And uh, so I just use that. Um, so anyway, um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'd like to hear the questions. Thank you, Joel. So don't forget, folks, if you want to ask a question, you might be muted. Make sure if you're on a computer, touch the space bar. And if you're on a phone or a tablet, uh, you just touch the microphone down in the bottom left corner. Hey, Joel, this is Keith. Great job on the cabinet. Did you hang it with the cleat on the back? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a French cleat on the back. So the French cleat is about right back here, the French cleat. And it's, so it's hanging on a, on a very wide board like this wide. And it's screwed right to the studs. And so, yeah, it, it, uh, that was in the original plans from Mike Pekovich. Great. Thanks. Joel. Yes, sir. When I heard that you were going to do this demonstration presentation, I threw together a small little cabinet myself last weekend. I'd like to show you. Lisa's okay. going to hold it up. Okay, I got to walk around here to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that one. <laughs> I know that I one. Have that, I have that picture down in my stairwell <laughs> down to my shop. That yeah, is, is that a, that's a cabinet. Yours is yeah, great. Yours is beautiful. 
Yeah. So, you know, I, I know I went overboard with the mark with the parquetry, but you know, I couldn't help <laughs> myself. So, uh, but you know, it's very, very ill. And the, and the one thing I left out on these things, if you're, you use something and you left, you put it down somewhere, you know, immediately it's missing. So you, you stop and you yeah. put it back. It's not like, uh, when you're working on a, when I used to be working on a project, I have all kinds of things everywhere and the chisel, I can't find the chisels. I can't find my, my pencil or marking gauges or anything. And I'm, I spent all this time just hunting for it. And, and so, but this eliminates it because you, you've got everything right here. You can see everything and uh, it, it uh, makes a big difference on your efficiency. Joel, how much time do you estimate it took to build that? Oh brother! Uh, <laughs> uh, um, I would say close to a hundred hours, but I I spent time. Uh, it took me like three hours just to learn how to use the lead dovetail jig. You know, so um, it and, and it took me a long time. Uh, this is the second panel I made. The first panel I made, I I messed it up, so it wasn't it wasn't square. It wasn't it wasn't centered, so I messed that up too. So it was just a couple of dumb things. But I would say like 50, 60 hours to build this thing. What is the depth of the cabinet? Oh, good question. Uh, let's see. Hey, look, there's my tape measure. <laughs> let's see this thing. The total depth, including the door, is, let's see, it is 15 or 14 and a half inches, 13 and a half inches. That's outside things. That's the outside. Yeah, that's the outside. So the back panel is a half inch back panel. Uh, these these inner panels are. Let me put my glasses on so I can see my tape measure. The inner panels are. This is five inches. Uh, let's see. This is three inches. This is three inches total depth, and that takes about a three quarters of an inch out of that total depth. And so this down here is three inches also. So that's three inches for the for the doors and five or like you know, let's see, let's measure the whole thing here. Like the plane till. The plane till is like nine inches. Did, did you draw did you draw this out or how did you figure out how big it, it needed to be to fit your tools? Okay, out? so okay, so what I did was I just took Mike Tekovich's uh, plans and it's just slightly shorter and slightly less wide because I, I didn't have enough board I didn't have enough boards to uh, or length of the board to go the full width and length that he had but I basically copied his uh, his uh, uh, design so I had so when you when you sign up for the with the uh, Houghton wood shop or workshop you can download you can print out all the all the drawings and you can watch the videos so I, I refer to the videos and the drawings quite often. Um, I don't have them with me right now, but they come in a pack. There's also some, some other other videos on doing various other things, like like making some of these things. He's got a detailed video on how how he came up with this. But basically, what he did was he got a piece of paper and he laid it out and he started laying out all of his tools on on the paper, and then he drew. Uh, uh, outlines of them and uh that's how he did it that's how he figured out the initial spacing and where he wanted but this is pretty much copied from what he did this layout right here this this thing is different like he had just one bank of drawers and he had all copies but i don't need that many so that's why i wanted to get the storage drawers and you know i he had more planes down here so i i decided i would just put all my marking and my scissors over here too oh these these particular scissors I'll put a link to these these are the best scissors I've ever gotten and so I'll, I'll, I'll send Gene a link to this uh, I was watching a um, a uh, savage what's the guy from uh, 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 anyway uh, I'll think of his name uh, Mythbusters yeah the, the uh, Adam uh, Sa Adam Savage yeah he uses these scissors and he recommended these scissors I was watching his uh, one one day build and he got a pair of these and he said they're and he's right these are great scissors and they're not very expensive at all anyway sorry i didn't mean to do a commercial but 
but uh, I learned a couple things that well, way. Well, tell us anyway. the name, for goodness sake. Oh, I don't remember what the name is, but I'll, I'll <laughs> here. here, let me see. Let's see if I can read this thing. Woo, holy mackerel. Well, they're, oh, they're engineer PH50. So they're engineer PH-50. And they are fantastic. Um, Joel, was that a T? What was the letter? P, P, as in, P as in Paul. P as in Paul. H as in our. PH-50? PH-50, yes. Okay. They're fantastic. I use them to cut uh, shim stock. I use them to cut wire. I use them to cut... Uh, Could you cut uh, the veneer with them, Joel? I have cut the veneer. I, you're not supposed to cut veneer with scissors. But yes, <laughs> I have cut the veneer with scissors, yeah. So, Joel, um, I don't know if you can see, but on everyone else's screens, there's a chat icon, and mm -hmm. that turns on the chat window on and off. And okay. I, I was able to get... Um, Catherine, can you see the window? I got Mike yeah. Pekovich's web uh, link off of Fine Woodworking. I put that out there, and then as I okay. was saying the name of the uh, okay. scissors, I typed that in. So yeah. your chat window, there's some resources for you there. Okay. It's also Matt Cremora. Cremora is, is another guy that built a a, a beautiful uh, wall hung cabinet. He has his own website, too. What's his first oh, there's name? One, yeah, Matt, M-A-T, M-A-T-T. -T. There's also another Matt. And uh, uh, that is, is uh, his, his name is Matthias Wendell. Wendell. And his website is called woodgears.ca. And he, he did a, a, a wall cap or a wall hung pool thing. In fact, I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, move this thing around and show you the, uh, basically what he did. This is my wall hung tool thing right here. If you can see it right there. So these are some of the things that, that uh, uh, Matt, uh, uh, Matthias Wandell came up with. These are some of his tool holders. This, this was my other pegboard that I, I redid. Uh, the the, the uh, plier holders is, is, uh, is uh, uh, Matt Wandell's, and so is the screwdriver holder. Uh, the, the, the chisel holder is, is the one I got from uh, uh, Shop Notes. But anyway, let me move back over here. Get back oh, to I, camera. I, I caught sight of your saw blade rack. I really like <laughs> your tripod. Yeah, that was, um, that was Shop Notes. Yeah. Walk, walk, and, your, uh, walk your tripod over there and do a okay, little all right. take of yeah, it. Yeah, this is, this is Shop Notes. Yeah, that's Shop Notes. That thing. Let me get this thing out of the way here. All right. Yeah, that's shop notes. And so, um, yeah. And this this is for Fred Shock. I mean, this is he inspired me to go out and buy a sixty tooth finish blade <laughs> because I was cutting plywood and I was having a terrible time. And I saw one of his projects where where he was uh, cutting plywood. So I called him up and he he said he had a sixty tooth tenor root. And so I. I, f I found that one. I kind of like that one a lot. So I got, that's why I got that. Let me get this thing. I'll come back in the picture here. Anyway, uh, are there any other questions? 